thought, no, I'm aloha. So the new moon is today. So we're in the energy of the new moon right now. And this is, um, you know, the Aquarian age, it's all about co-collaboration. So it's about moving from me to we consciousness. So uh, let me turn this off. It's echo. So we're moving from me to we consciousness. So, and personally, I'm collaborating with my soul to receive information. And then I, in turn, share this with you. So that I really ask that you uh, click, you know, like the video, share the video. And this is not about building my ego at all. If that were the case, I would have dropped this like a hot potato a long time ago. And I'm sure the teachers and healers and life coaches can relate to this too. This is really about a feedback loop. So you know there's 144,000 human templates on this earth. Okay? And this means that I am one of those 144,000 templates. Just as you are one of these 144,000 templates too. Or what the gene keys call fractal lines. You know, or you could call it soul tribe or soul cluster. So you may be on my fractal line. And how do you know? Because you'll feel it. You'll just feel this kind of relaxation. Oh, Kalis Yogi really speaks my language. Other people may um, be out there saying the same things, right? But I really get it and I understand and I can hear it from him. You know those people in your life, they just feel so familiar almost immediately. That's how you know that someone's on your fractal line, that right of the 144,000 templates. And so if you resonate with out there with what I'm saying, right, through my videos, then you're one of these people that I'm here to serve. And if you think, oh man, this guy annoys me to death, right, I can't even listen to him right, then I'm not your cup of tea. And it's not personal. You're simply not on my fractal line. You belong somewhere else. You know, because we live in a world steeped in shadow. That's why it's so difficult for us to find one another, right, that are on the same fractal line. And that's why there's so many dysfunctional relationships in the world, because we're with the wrong people, right? So back to the feedback, okay? this co-collaboration with me and you out there. So let me know so that I can adjust my message. So I can see, okay, well, they really liked when I did this, uh, the 12 signs, or no, they didn't like that, right? They didn't like that, so, right? So I can adjust my, my messaging. So I'm a projector in the human design system, if you know human design, so I love being efficient with my energy, the one of the worst things that I write that up, my challenge is this wasting my energy, right? So that I know that I'm reaching the right people with my messages. So leave your comments below too, okay? And this is really gonna help me to help you and you help me and it's this beautiful we consciousness, right? As we move into the Aquarian age as a collective. Okay, so back to the new moon energy. So happy new moon. So the new moon, just as a reminder, is a seed time. And that's where the luminaries, right, the sun and the moon, come together to create something new for you in your life. And this cycle is about bringing you closer and closer to your authentic self. Like we, we really have to remember that the end game is to evolve and to evolve is to become our authentic creative self, our genius self, right? The highest expression of you in this lifetime. So it's the grasshopper new moon. And grasshoppers, in my research, they can only jump forward, not backwards or sideways. That's really interesting. So this is why grasshoppers are the symbol of all good luck right? All over the world, they're a symbol of good luck. And the grasshopper's ability to connect and understand, right, through sound vibrations with this little antenna, 
is also a symbol of your inner voice. So the grasshopper is telling you to trust your inner voice for this new moon. Remember the new moon energy goes through the whole cycle, right? So it's the whole month you're dealing with this energy. And grasshoppers can also represent students, right? If you're a teacher or clients, if you're a life coach or healer that you work with, okay? So uh, for the grasshopper, it's about making a leap of faith, right? Making a leap, leap of faith this month and moving, right? The grasshopper likes to move. So it's about us getting going. Okay. I just want some water. I hope this fan isn't bothering you. I have to have it on me because it's super hot in Hawaii. It's very tropical. Okay. So the sun and moon are both in the 35th gene key. And this is the shadow of hunger and the gift of adventure and boundlessness. Okay, so this shadow of hunger <clears throat> makes you fear being bored. So it drives you to fill up your life with activity, right? And this is like physical activity or mental activity. So here's a personal example. When I would go to the bathroom, I would, this is in the past until I caught this shadow pattern, right? I would need something. I would desperately need something to read. And I would feel this anxiety if I couldn't find anything. Or when I ate alone, I would read the side of the cereal box or write or a book or something. It was a compulsion. So this is an example of the shadow of hunger. And it's about not being okay with silence, right? Especially when you're alone or you're not good with silences when there's those natural pauses that come in conversations. Right, you've got to fill it up with something. It can be hungry for more information, hungry for more peak experiences that take you from this fear of boredom or emptiness. So hunger is driving you, right, to not feel that emptiness and boredom. And just think of how people are not okay now with this feeling of being bored, right? Especially with our phones, you know, we have so many distractions now. So it's about being hungry for change, to be constantly stimulated. And this is, insa it's just an insatiable need to feel fulfilled, but it never ends, right? It's a cycle, because as soon as you feel satiated and fulfilled, then you begin to feel hungry again, right, for stimulation. And this cycle continues and continues, and of course keeps you out of the present moment. That's what shadow patterns do, and that keeps you out of reality. So this shadow is paired with the shadow of impatience, right? There's a duo right there, hunger and impatience. And it wants you to see this constant progress out in the external world, right? That you're in constant motion. But this comes at a great cost because your inner world suffers, right? It's all about making progress in the external world. And did you know that there's a whole universe inside you? It's like Dr. Seuss, right? Horton, here's a who. So this is what's calling for your attention. This great adventure is calling you to, for one, explore this inner world and also to move out of your comfort zone, right? So that's the gift of adventure. And adventure is about being patient with the slow rhythms of life and to cultivate a deep trust of this underlying natural intelligence to life, and, right? And when we do practice Kundalini Yoga and meditation, we chant the Adi Mantra, Om Namo Gurudev Namo. And what we're doing there is we're calling on this intelligence that knows what's best for you. So that you can go deep inside for this great adventure, or you can respond to an outer venture that's calling you right? That's calling you out. You're not driven by a fear. So before we get into the signs, okay, so don't just jump into your sign yet. I've created another Kundalini Yoga meditation for the 35th Gene Key, Hunger and Adventure. And this is a 31 minute meditation. It's called Le Leia Yoga. You may have practiced it already. And it brings your soul and destiny present 
and makes you creative and focused on what fulfills you so you, that you don't fall into the shadow of hunger that drives you outside of yourself, right? Keeps you in this cycle. So the meditation brings that energy, right? Brings it back and keeps it inside you. So it's said by the ancients that this mantra was guarded like a secret gem. So it's the key to the inner doors of the sound current, right? And this is the realm of the creative sound of the universe. So if you listen to the sound of the mantra, you become absorbed into the unlimited, right? The boundlessness of your higher self right? that knows no bounds. So it uses a three and a half cycle which is the pulse rhythm of the kundalini energy so this is why the kundalini yoga or kundalini energy is often described as lying coiled like a snake three and a half times around the base of the spine so remember too right kundalini yoga is the yoga of awareness and this is really what integrates the shadow is your awareness so it expands your awareness so this meditation awakens your awareness and empowers your subtle body. And that's the, bo the body that surrounds your soul and travels with you after physical death. Okay. So I want to go through the 12 signs. Okay. So this is for your sun sign. You probably, everybody knows their sun sign. And then you, you want to look at your moon sign and your rising sign. So you can go to astro, A-S-T-R-O dot com, and you can get your free chart, right? And you look at your little crescent, and you look at, you know, if it's a circle, it's on the horizon. It will be that first house, whatever sign that's in. That's your rising sign, okay? So you want to listen to all three. So the order of importance is your, is your rising sign, and then your sun, and then your moon. Okay, so you relate to one of them for sure. So let's go through the Aries, sun, moon, and rising. And the grasshopper new moon falls into your third house. So you may be feeling or have felt impatient with siblings or your neighbors. Or your communication style may not have been grounded. It might have been triggering your, your siblings, neighbors. Even feeling impatient with your car or the way you travel around, right? Get around and feeling hungry for a change in these areas. So Grasshopper says, make a leap of faith in this area and to give unconditionally to your siblings or your neighbors. So this means like being open with your communication, open hearted, right? You can even communicate in loving ways to your vehicle, right? Because we're merged, we forget we're merged with our vehicles, we're merged with our computers, right? Third house rules technology too. And they respond to our energy. I remember way back when I had a JLB, my um, supervisor at the time, she was like type A, right? Type A, stressed out. And she would all, and I was like the unofficial tech <laughs> person. But I understand energy, right? So you come and fix my computer. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's acting up and this and that. So I would get her to leave, like go get a coffee or something and come back. And I would just kind of like calm my energy, reboot the computer, right? And just ground and she would come back and it would be working perfectly, right? So this is how it can work. If you have vehicle problems or computer problems, it's like, oh, I just need to ground. I need to get calm. Because they're reflecting, right, of how your stress or how you're feeling. So also for the Aries rising sun moon is to watch your thoughts, right? So something new will be seated here and calling you to an adventure to be open hearted, right, with neighbors and siblings. So to help you, we also have Pluto trining Venus. And so Pluto's empowering and inspiring you by giving you ways to simplify. That's the key word, right? It's the gift of, of simple, simplification. So simplifying your material resources, right? Your money and how you earn money, right? This doesn't have to be a complex thing, right? It's about uh, allowing those, that inspiration to come to you. Okay. 
So if you're a Taurus, sun, moon, or rising, the grasshopper new moon falls into your second house. So you may have felt really impatient with your material resources and how you make your money and really hungry for change in this area. So this can also affect your self-value, right? Your self-esteem. So the new moon is saying make a leap of faith in this area and give unconditionally to yourself, right? So really look at how you talk to yourself and tell yourself that you do have value, even if you're not seeing it reflected on the external, because your inner resources are inside you. They're not coming from out there, they're from inside you, right? So Yogi Bhajan talks about this, right? When you value yourself, then the world values you. It doesn't work the other way around. Oh, I'll value myself and everybody values me, right? It's an inside job. So new ways of earning money, new ideas will become will be coming to you, right? This new moon cycle. So you want to leap on them. And then to help, <clears throat> Pluto is empowering and inspiring you by giving you ways to simplify how you show up in the world and how other people see you. This is about your attitude, like simplify your attitude towards life, right? Don't make it all complex. And maybe there's ways, you know, the first house is about your appearance. Maybe there's going to be some ways that you can make yourself more attractive, right? To boost your self-confidence. And this isn't from like an ego a vanity thing. This is like, you know, we all want to feel good in our, in our bodies and how we and present our best self, right? So if we're having problems with self-value or self-esteem, that can affect how, you know, I don't care about my parents anymore and things like that. So this inspirational message will probably come through other people, right? Your relationships, because it's the polarity is the seventh house. Okay. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. Grasshopper, new moons in your first house. And this is your new moon, right? Because the new moon is in Gemini. So you may feel impatient with your appearance, the way you show up in the world, and you may feel hungry for change in this area, not being okay with the way you look. And Gemini's like change anyway, right? So Grasshopper says to make a leap of faith in this area and to give unconditionally to yourself. So make those changes, right? And something new will be seated here. Right. So to help you, Pluto's inspiring you to simplify by letting go of something that's been completed. Right. So it could be a relationship, probably something very karmic. And the new moon is marking a whole brand new cycle for you. So you want to listen for inspiration through your dreams or spend time in solitude or a retreat. You know, you could have a staycation instead of a vacation and go inside to receive this information about how you are going to, new ways in, in which you are going to show up in the world, right? And your attitude towards life's going to change. This is very positive, right? It's all positive aspects, this new moon. So Cancer, Sun, Moon are rising. The Cancer new moon falls into your 12th house. So you may feel impatient with your relationship with your spirituality. Right? Like feeling lost in that area. You may feel impatient with your karma, with all the losses that you've experienced, right? You're hungry for change, changes in these areas. And you may have been a recluse for a while, right? Getting impatient with that too. So you want to give unconditionally to yourself by being compassionate and forgiving towards yourself in all of these losses that you've experienced. So you don't want to start blaming yourself, you know? There's a, we need to remember that the universe is benevolent and it's everything that's delivered to us is always delivered through love, okay? So being compassionate and forgiving to all the players, right? All those karmic relationships and especially to yourself. So to help you out, Pluto's inspiring and empowering you with uh, simplifying your social network. So you may have to let go of some friends, right, that are making your life more complex than it needs to be. 
or you may have taken on too many social causes, right? So you want to simplify them to the ones that have value for you and especially what gives you joy, right? So keep that, so keep that in mind, okay? You'll know, right? You'll know who I'm talking about. Those kind of foul weather friends, you only hear from them when they're going through a hard time, right? They make your life complex, things like that. Okay, so if you're Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising, the grasshopper new moon falls into your 11th house, and this is your network of friends, so the 11th house also rules the internet. So it also includes your social network, right? Your internet friends or community. So you may have felt impatient with your social groups, your friends or, or lack thereof, not having friends. Or you may have felt impatient with your internet business, right? The lack of rewards in these areas and your hopes and wishes for the future not manifesting. This could bring up a lot of impatience and then hunger for a change in this area of your life. So grasshopper new moon says make a leap of faith with your social community. So friends, the groups you belong to, right? There's an adventure that's calling you in this area. It means to unconditionally give of yourself to your community. Because remember when we give of ourselves, we're really giving from our hearts and our heart knows no bounds, right? It's, it's connected to the infinite. So that never goes empty. So there's gonna be some new adventure seated in this area where you attract maybe a new network of friends or you're brought in your reach, especially if you, if you have an internet business, but you must be patient and you must tap into your boundless heart. So Leo rules the heart anyway, right? So give even if no one's giving back to you. Nobody's acknowledging you or giving you any rewards, right? Just give, give anyway. And this is going to raise your frequency and this magnetizes higher frequencies back to you. So to help you, Pluto's empowering you with inspiration to simplify your career, right? Where are you making your career too complex? Maybe you got too many pots on the stove, right? And ask yourself, how can I simplify my offering? Say if you have an internet business or how can I um, simplify uh, my relationship with my boss or any authority figures, things like that. So Venus says to focus on what brings you joy in your career and focus there, right? What you're good at what you're known for, right? Your reputation. So this inspiration can come through some kind of crisis or a problem that forces you to look at your work habits or your health routines and how you spend your days. That's a little bougie. Okay. So let's go to Virgo, right? Is next. So Virgo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. I know a lot of Virgos in my life. So the grasshopper new moon falls into your 10th house, right? Career. So you may have been impatient with your career or your public image or your reputation or your responsibilities with bosses or father figures. And this could even play out with your spouse, right? Something usually a masculine figure and someone you feel has authority over you. Right? So feeling hungry for change in this area of your life. And the grasshopper new moon says make a leap of faith in this area. Give of yourself con unconditionally to your career and to those authority figures. So approach them with an open heart. Right. And step into this new adventure and consciousness that no one has any power over you. It's because you're giving your power away. Right. And also leap when a new opportunity shows itself. Right. A lot of Virgos, I know they're like really closing chapters right now. So a new opportunity is going to come in career and you want to trust, make the leap of faith. That you'll have a different relationship, right, with your career. It's not going to be like it was before. So to help you out, Pluto's inspiring and empowering you to simplify your belief system. Right. Maybe some beliefs that you've lived with, they need to be uh, reflected upon. Right. 
and how you go about your career and your beliefs about how your career should unfold or how I should work with authority figures or how should I be an authority figure, right? You want to really like um, streamline that, right? Simplification is about streamlining, getting rid of all the excess so you can hone your focus. So look closely at your beliefs and inspiration will come. So Libra sun moon are rising. The grasshopper new moon falls into your ninth house. So you may have been feeling impatient with finding your higher purpose, your dharma. Or you may have felt impatient with spiritual teachings or a spiritual teacher, right? That you feel like you've, you're outgrown. You've outgrown that. And feeling hungry for change in that area of your life. So the grasshopper new moon says make a leap of faith in this area and give yourself unconditionally, right? Give of yourself unconditionally to your higher purpose, to your dharma or to a new spiritual teachings or can also mean travel, right? Because the ninth house is all about expanding your awareness. And so we learn when we uh, do far away travel and learn about other cultures, right? So you want to leap if these opportunities come. So to help you out, Pluto's inspiring and empowering you by simplifying your relationship to a sexual partner, a person that you may share resources with, or a trauma that's coming up that needs healing. So Venus is going to help you get the help that you need, okay? Because wherever Venus is, it's like, oh, it's a chill ride, right? And Venus is in that eighth house. So trust that. So Scorpio sun, moon are rising. The grasshopper new moon falls into your eighth house. And you may have felt impatient with your sexual partner or their lack of, like not having any sexual partner. Or you may have felt impatient with yourself about having such intense emotions, right? And uh, feeling impatient with your need to heal, right? Your healing isn't complete. So feeling hungry for change in that area. So the grasshopper new moon says make a leap of faith in this area and give of yourself unconditionally to your sexual partner or admitting to yourself that you want this deep intimacy, right? It's a real need, especially for uh, Scorpios, right? That's your house. So surrender to your intense emotions and, he and healing, right? So to help you out, Pluto's inspiring and empowering you by simplifying your relationship to your marriage partner or your other one-on-one -on -one relationships or helping you to release you from a contract or an obligation. So it could be a dissolving of your marriage too because of this deep need for intimacy. So again, leap on it, right, when the opportunity comes. So Sagittarius, sun, moon are rising. So the grasshopper new moon falls into your seventh house. So you may have felt impatient with a marriage partner or someone you feel an obligation towards. So you can feel hungry for change in this area, right? Someone that you have a contract with. So the grasshopper new moon says make a leap of faith in this area and you may want to get married right or get out of a marriage because something new in your house of partnership will be seated this month so to help you out pluto's inspiring and empowering you by simplifying your relationship to service right or to your work the things that you do on the day to day and then also health routines right so really listen to that inspiration and this is going to help you with your uh, partnerships. And this is also clients too, right? Clients um, and students if you're a teacher or a life coach, healer. So the Capricorn sun, moon are rising. The grasshopper new moon falls into your sixth house. And so you may have felt impatient with your health or your daily work routine, and this can cause you mental anxiety, like in worry, right? That you in the sixth house is worry. So this is feeling impatient with yourself. Like, why am I not improving? Why isn't my health improving? So you can feel 
you can be hungry for these things to change in your area of health and work. So something new is coming in the area of your health, right? Or your thinking. Remember, Gemini is about thinking. Your thinking and uh, has to change about it and receiving new information that's going to open you up to a whole brand new adventure, right? About your health and your work. So this could be, um, you know, a job coming or a job leaving. Because remember when the new moon is up, in order for something to come in that's new, something has to go, right? So that's all part of the divine timing. So grasshopper new moon uh, says make a leap of faith in this area and give unconditionally to yourself when it comes to your health and your work routine, right? So be patient with yourself, with your health. There's a reason why this is happening. And it also could mean that to give of yourself unconditionally to your work colleagues or your workmates, the people that you work with, just be more open hearted with those people. And so to help you, Pluto's inspiring and empowering you by simplifying your relationship with your children, if you have them, or uh, childlike people in your life, or taking up a hobby or a creative project, something that's fun and light, right? And this is going to help you with your health and work. So if opportunities come around this uh, fun and new hobby, like make the leap. Okay, Aquarius, <laughs> Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. So the grasshopper new moon falls into your fifth house. So you may have felt impatient with your children, if you have them, or impatient with a romantic partner, or there's like no romance, right? You're not having any fun, impatience with that and impatient with the way you express yourself, right? Not being able to express yourself in an authentic way. So you may be really hungry for these things to change in that area of your life. So just know that there's something new that's coming in this area of romance, creativity, and your children and having fun. So to help you, Pluto's inspiring and empowering you by simplifying your home life, your family, Right? What family members are making your life complex? Where in your home are, is, are things getting complex? Right? Maybe your home needs to change. Right? Maybe there's some, you can make some kind of renovations that makes it more comfortable for you because it's, in, it's Venus, right? Okay. So the last one, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. The grasshopper new moon falls into your fourth house. So this is impatience with your home life. So hungry for change in this area. And I know someone who's a Pisces rising and she's, um, I love talking to these people, right? Cause I have all their charts so I can really make the connections. And she has insect problems, right? All of a sudden insect problems coming up around this new moon and her home has to be fumigated, right? So she's a Pisces rising. So she's considering moving. Right, that she doesn't want to, right? The mind and ego don't want any change. But trust, right? Trust if your home is making you uncomfortable. Trust those feelings that are coming up and know that the universe is setting up a new home for you that's more aligned with you, right? More supportive of you. So you want to make the leap when these opportunities present themselves. And to help you, Pluto is inspiring and empowering you by simplifying your communication. You know, the way you think might be more direct. Don't beat around the bush, right? The way you speak to others. So uh, a new message could be coming from your neighbors or a sibling. So keep things simple and get rid of what's unnecessary, right? Old letters, files on computers books, all technology, those kinds of things you'll need to simplify. So I hope this gives you some idea and some food to chew on for uh, today and just let it like, let it sink in and then let that, let Pluto do its magic, right? With the inspiration for you. Okay. And...
Let's so have some water. Okay. I see everybody sitting on. Yes, Mallory. I'm a Taurus too. Yeah, just know that it's going to break for us bulls. Okay. Oh, the grasshopper, yeah. The Karate Kid movie. And also, the um, what's that old movie with what's-his-face in it from the, the 70s? With the grass when, grasshopper when you can grab the pebble from my hand. <laughs> I forget what movie that's called, but it's reminding me of that too. That's the student connection, grasshopper and students. Okay. Yes, yes, Christine. It, uh, sadness is very key, and it does make a difference. You know, sometimes I wake up in the morning. You know, there's times that I've woken up in the morning. You know, you f sometimes you feel, like, more tired than when you went to sleep. You wake up more tired, like you've been working all night, as we do. We work in other realms in the evening. It's like, oh, God, I don't know if I can do my sadhana. And then you just do it, and you feel so much better, right? So I'm a huge proponent of sadhana practice to keep yourself together. Kung Fu. That's right. <laughs> yeah, good one. She remembers. Okay. So just a reminder that uh, the Jinky of... Uh, Meditation for Purpose can be found below, so you can click there and you can download it. It's for hunger. And um, Shadow Astrology Readings, if you need some uh, guidance and direction according to your chart. And what else? I think that's about it. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Aloha, and keep up, and right, and just let, just trust Right? It's about trusting life and the rhythms of life and life knows best and you're just the passenger in this vehicle. Okay? And everything's going to be okay. <laughs> okay. So, I know I'm everyone. Aloha.